If you are live streaming, then I suppose chances are pretty high that in some way or fashion, you are rescaling your video. So you're playing, for example, in 1080p or in 1440p, and you then rescale your video to a lower resolution, which is feasible to being live streamed over the internet. Now, Obvious Studio provides three different methods to rescale your output, and two of these have different filters, meaning in total there are nine different methods on how you can rescale your live stream. But which out of all of these options actually provide you with the best possible image quality and which takes the least amount of performance hit on your system? Let's find out. Now, to start off with, let me show you the three different methods that I've mentioned before on how you can rescale your live stream. The first one is in the settings tab when you go to the video tab. And here you have the base resolution, which you usually want to um, match your monitor resolution. So in my case, this is 1440p. And then you have the output scaled resolution, which would be your downscaled version of the live stream. Right now I've chosen 1080p. And here we have three different filters. Now the second approach is when you select the same base as well as output resolution. Then you can go over to the output tab and here click on rescale output. And then once again, select 1080p. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is that in the output tab, we are using the encoder to downscale. So if you select X264, you downscale using the CPU. Whereas on the other hand, in the video tab, you always use the GPU to downscale. Now, the final and last way on how you can rescale your live stream is by simply selecting a lower canvas resolution. So for example, if you want to do 1080p, then you just put in 1080p for both hit apply. Now what happens is that the video capture is actually um, larger than your canvas here. So what you can do now is you can click on transform and then go to stretch to screen and voila, it once again fits your screen. Now here you actually also can select different filters. So we have five different filters to choose from if we were to rescale in the canvas. Uh, this last method also rescales using the GPU and I will call it canvas rescaling. Now, the first question I'd like to answer here is which out of these nine filters is the best in terms of performance? Now, unfortunately, the answer isn't just a simple use this or that because it actually depends on the game you're playing, the resolution you're playing at, the resolution that you stream at, and finally also on the encoder that you're using. So in order to test this very manifold problem, I have actually run a few different benchmarks with three different games and one GPU benchmark. I am using both the X264 as well as the NVNC codec with the settings that I'm showing here. And I don't have any other sources in my OBS studio. So it is really the best possible performance that you can expect when downscaling with a certain method. Now we will begin with PUBG in ultra settings and played at 1440p and we're going to be live streaming with NVNC, so with the GPU and using a 75% downscale. Now on this graph you can see the minimum average and maximum frames per second using different filters and the performance I got without streaming is shown on the bottom. Now going from bottom to top we can see that when we use the video tab to do the downscaling um, there isn't really a big difference between the different filters. Now, this is a first surprise because the general notion is that Lanxus generally provides the best image quality while at the same time having the highest impact on your system. So while Bilinear provided the highest average and maximum frames per second, the minimum frames per second was actually highest for Lanxus. Moving up to encoder downscaling, we can see that the average frames per second does decrease significantly. And this is kind of a common theme whenever we are looking at encoder downscaling, we can see that this usually provides the lowest performance overall. Finally, moving up to all of the different canvas downscales. Now basically disabling downscaling should basically provide you with the highest frames per second. In this case, actually point downscaling got a little bit higher frames per second. But in general, the difference between the different filters once again is pretty much negligible. However, generally average frames per second were slightly lower than downscaling using the video tab. Next, we will move on to live streaming using X264, so encoding on the CPU. Encoder downscaling once again produces significantly lower frames per second in-game than downscaling using the video tab. 
And interestingly, using the canvas to downscale, we do get almost identical, if not even worse result than with the encoder. So in this scenario, you really don't want to be downscaling using the canvas. Moving on to the results at 960p, that is a 66% downscale, and we have the NVNC stream to the left and the X264 stream on the right. Considering NVENC to stream, we can still see that using the encoder to downscale our footage still produces the lowest frames per second overall. On the other hand, disabling any downscaling and downscaling using the canvas actually produces the highest frames per second. But to be honest, the differences are almost negligible, so let's move on to X264 streaming. Notice that the overall frames per second and especially the minimum frames per second decrease significantly going from NVENC to X264. Now interestingly in this case encoder downscaling produces the second highest performance in game over all different filters. So that is a bit of an old ball result there but in general canvas and video downscaling doesn't produce terribly different results and therefore it's actually hard to tell which one you should use simply judging by performance. Finally we're going to look at live streaming at 720p which corresponds to a downscale of 50%. Starting off once again with the NVNC live stream we can see that the different filters in the video tab and the different filters on the canvas actually produce somewhat similar performance in game. Once again encoder downscaling is the worst in terms of performance. And finally we find some interesting results when looking at X264. Now this is the first time where the average and minimum frames per second actually increased compared to streaming using NVENC. While encoder downscaling once again produces the lowest performance in game, we can actually see that in this case canvas downscaling does produce significantly better results in game compared to downscaling using the video tab. Now within one of these two respective options it doesn't really matter in terms of performance which filter you're using because the overall performance is pretty much identical regardless of the filter chosen. Now what I think happens in this particular situation is that because PUBG is such a GPU intensive game and because I do have a rather decent CPU that in these circumstances the CPU is able to output a 720p livestream without bottlenecking my system and at the same time I can benefit from the GPU to downscale my footage to 720p. Now just for completeness I also wanted to quickly show results of the CSGO performance using different filters and different downscale resolutions because CSGO is obviously much more of a CPU heavy game than PUBG. Note that for simplicity I do not show any results when downscaling using the canvas. So generally you can see that the performance decrease is absolutely humongous when going from NVENC to X264. This is obviously because CSGO is such a CPU heavy game that when you actually live stream on the CPU you simply do not have enough performance left to actually run the game. Once again we can see that downscaling using the encoder tab produces the lowest performance overall and that the difference between different filters when downscaling using the video tab is almost negligible. So generally you really shouldn't be too worried about which kind of filter you're using to downscale your footage because the overall performance in game is almost identical regardless of the filter used. So having discussed performance it is now definitely time to look at the quality that you can expect using the different filters. Now in order to be as objective as possible what I've done is I've recorded a about 20 second clip in Counter-Strike Global Offensive using a lossless codec in the Xtori. So basically each frame in that video is almost 100% representative of what you actually see in game. That video is huge by the way. And I then recorded this video using the different filters and the settings shown in the beginning. Now using some Premiere Magic and Linux I was able to extract the PSNR over a period of 15 seconds of each individual filter used. Now this PSNR is a very handy measure of quality loss due to compression. So the higher the value the closer the video is to the original file. So once again starting with 1080p so a 75% downscale and on this plot you can see results when live streaming with NVENC on the bottom and results when live streaming using X264 on the top. So generally we can see that downscaling using the video tab and the Lanxus filter produces the highest PSNR values within the respective encoder. 
Now, interestingly, I found that live streaming with X264 actually produces the worst looking image compared to NVENC. And when we look at a video comparison, then we can actually see that there is a significant decrease in quality when going from NVENC to X264. Other than that, we can see that canvas point downscaling produces absolutely horrendously low PSNR values. And the reason for that is that the image becomes very pixelated. So this is how the downscaled video looks using point downscale. And this is how the original looks. As you can see, especially down here in this circle, we get very pixelated results. And just in general, the image doesn't look very pleasing to the eye compared to say, for example, Langsus and using the NVNC codec for encoding. Now, when moving on to a 66% downscale, we find a very peculiar behavior. We find that the encoder downscale actually produces the highest image quality, which is very much in contrast to the results found at 75% downscale. Now, the reason for that behavior is that at 960p, we get a shift in the position of the video using the different filters. So when we look at, this is the original, and then when we look at Lynx's filter, we can see that especially on the corners, the image kind of shrinks. So for some reason that happens, and this is not the case with encoded downscaling. And of course, with such a shrinkage of the image, um, we do get much lower PSNR values because individual pixels don't align with the original image anymore. So basically we cannot really compare encoded downscaling with the other options because it's just an unfair comparison. Now for the different encoders, we can now see that video downscaling produces significantly better results than canvas downscaling. And within the video downscale, um, Langsas or Bilinear produces the highest PSNR values. And finally looking at the results at 720p, so a downscale of 50%, Results once again in the same behavior. The highest PSNR values are obtained using the video tab and the Lanxus filter. So in summarizing, I think it's fair to say that using the Lanxus filter in the video tab produces the highest possible image quality among all of the different filters. Now, considering that I could not actually measure a decrease in gaming performance when using the Lanxus filter, I would highly recommend everybody to be using the Lanxus filter for downscaling your videos in OBS Studio. Now, if you're interested in looking at the qualities yourself, then I have left a link to an Imgur album in the description below where you can go and check out individual images using the different filters yourself. But with that, I'd like to wrap up today's video, guys. Basically, my recommendation would be use NVNC unless the game is very GPU heavy and use the Lanxus filter in the video tab to downscale in order to get the best possible image quality and overall also to get the best possible performance in game. But that's it for today guys. If you still have any questions, leave them down below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video.